everybody, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments, and today I am going to show you how you can find the right page pattern for photos that you've already printed, because some of you print your photos before you make your page. So I have my photos organized into different groups. This group has photos of people, and some of them are close up, and some of them are a little further back. And I'm sorry about the glare on the photos. These are a lot more glossy than the photos I normally use for these videos. And then I have photos, these could, these are just fun details. They could be cut up into mosaic potentially or smaller pieces. So these are just ones, no people in it, not worried about cutting someone's face in half or anything like that. These ones are all landscape photos. These photos were taken at Mount Vernon, by the way, up in Alexandria, Virginia. These photos were actually from 2005, so they've been sitting in a box for a while. And this last group I was just showing now was photos of the house. So these are all random photos. I probably won't use them all because I don't necessarily, necessarily like all the photos. So as usual, the first thing you want to do is choose what your focal point will be. So on the side, I have two photos that I think would make good focal points because they had group shots. The rest of these don't really have any group shots. And I really like this one. It's the group of us in front of the house. So, and I want to use the entire photo, the entire four by six photo. I'm not going to crop it down. So I'm going to choose a page pattern based on that focal point. And by the way, I'm going to be doing two layouts today. So the first step is to pick photos just for one layout. So that's how I'm going to do it today. I'm just going to do one layout and then do the second one. So the photos of people, I have a mix of some really close up and some a little bit farther back. None of them are very far back. I don't see myself choosing a pattern with a lot of small spots because these photos are not very friendly for cropping really small. So I'm probably going to find large or medium size design spots and not too much small ones and like this here I think I like that particular shot right there but I can't crop that one really small and I do like the landscape photos so I think I might use those as a mosaic. Something you can do before you look for the pattern is get out your basic dies and see how your photos could fit within those dies. So that photo could fit with the three by three or three by four die. And you can take a look at the two by two and I can see I don't really want to crop it to two by two. So I recommend getting your basic dies out and see how far down could your photos be cropped. So that way when you're looking for a page pattern, you kind of have an idea of what size design spots you need. So you don't need a perfect guess or anything like that. You just kind of need an idea. So here again, I have the three by four and I think it'd be cropped well. So again, I think a good pattern would have at least medium sized spots. All right, now I'm on the pattern gallery. And so I know my focal points is going to be the full four by six photo. And I want to look for a pattern that where it has the bigger die from die set B, it's going to be this shape right here, but going horizontally to fit my focal point. And then I want to look for patterns that have that, plus they have at least medium or larger size design spots. So I don't feel, like I said before, I don't feel like I'm going to have a lot of photos for smaller spaces. So what I'm going to do for now is at least it's look through the one through nine image spots. If you don't have a lot of photos or if you still have some larger photos, the 10 through 19 could work as well. But I'm gonna look at the one through nine image spots. And I'm just gonna scroll and there's certainly other, other categories you can look at. I don't feel like mine need to be in a particular category. Although something I forgot to mention in the previous part was a lot of my photos are horizontal. So that's my other goal. So I'm looking for a horizontal focal point, medium sized design spots or larger. And I also want to see any patterns that are more, have more horizontal spots. So let's scroll down and see. So I have this one here, which could potentially work, although I want 
to have a main focal point. This pattern, you could make one of these a focal point, but I kind of, since it's a group shot, I kind of want it in the middle. So kind of think of stuff like that, like if, you know, where do you want to place your focal point on the layout? A lot of times I like to have mine in the middle, especially if, I'm, if I have a nice group shot. This one has a lot of mosaics, so I'm definitely not looking for any mosaic style patterns, even though little mosaic parts would be okay. Um, let's see, go load more. And I'm going to keep scrolling. So there's this one, and it actually has a lot of horizontal design spots, but I really don't feel like I have anything for the strip die, so I'm going to continue. Again, a lot of these have mosaics. This one has four small spots, so. I don't know if that'll be the best for me. And I'm going to keep going over here. A lot of big horizontal spots, but it also has these small vertical spots. I'm not sure if that's going to work for me either. I'm going to keep going until I find something I like. There's a lot of mosaic stuff, which again, I am not doing at least a big mosaic. And by the way, I do have a video called Four Steps to Choosing the Right Page Pattern. I recommend going and watching that for an overall uh, idea of how to choose the right page pattern. Let's see, I'm still going to keep scrolling. And I do, one of my tips is I think it's best to look at the page pattern gallery on a computer. I on the phone, you're only going to see one pattern at a time. I'm not sure how it looks at it on a tablet. But if you're at a crop and the only thing you bring is your phone, and it's probably going to, you know, bug you to only see one pattern at a time, I recommend either working on your projects when you have, when you're by your desktop, or before you go somewhere, you choose the page patterns on your desktop and then when you go to the crop you can easily look up that number on your phone so I definitely it's a lot faster you can see how I can see multiple patterns on the desktop whereas on the phone like I said you're only seeing it one at a time so that's a piece of advice so here I have the four by six going this way and there's a lot of medium spots so this one could potentially work Although I think I would prefer a design spot that's more in the middle. But again, this one could work. I really, uh, I think I might pick this one because it has that design spot in the middle. It's got a lot of horizontal spots and then it has the mosaic portions for those landscape, which that was kind of an optional thing for me. But I think these two areas would be nice for those landscape photos. There are these two little spots, but with my photos, I have a few detail photos that I could crop, or I'd be okay cropping really small, and I think they could go in these two spots. So if you do find a pattern that mostly works with a lot, but maybe you don't have any photos that go in these two by three spots, what I recommend is looking into something like pattern paper to go there, or if you have a two by three die or other embellishments. So I hear a lot of people say the patterns don't work for them, but I say give it a chance because it may work better than you realize. And the trick is to know how to fill the spots up. So again, if you don't have photos that fill, even if, Let's say you had a lot of horizontal photos and they could fit perfectly in these spots, but you don't have anything in the smaller spots. Look into an embellishment or pattern paper. So it doesn't have to fit. Like I said, I don't look for the perfect page pattern. I don't, you know, see every, look at every single photo and see how every single photo could fit. I just get an overall idea. And then I choose a pattern I think would be good. So... Anyway, so I hope this video ends up being helpful for you and helps picking a pattern be a little less un overwhelming. All right, so I'm going to choose this one. This is pattern 451 if any of you want to use this pattern for your own pages later. So I'm going to go ahead and put this layout together based on this page pattern. All right, so I put my mats, the paper mats down. I don't have my photos yet. 
Uh, so for the colors, I chose this particular red because the roof kind of has a red color and the sage went with the red and the background and it reminded me of the green trees around his or George Washington's property. And then I have the blue in there, just that little pop of color. I didn't want the layout to look too boring. So lately I've been into adding a little more color when I have a lot of neutrals. All right, so I know right in the middle, I'm gonna put in my focal point. And then the two empty sections are where my mosaic's gonna go. And I have these photos. I don't really wanna use this one because I think it would look weird for it to be split in half. There is these clouds, which could work nicely. I don't really want to show meat. <laughs> Even though it could work, I don't really want that as a mosaic. So it really looks like the only one that could work from that group is the clouds. But I could also use a landscape photo, which it's beautiful there. And I really like this photo. I like the little building in the background and the fence and the trees. It just shows a lot more about you know, this area and the property. So I really like that one. I'm going to choose the landscape and it won't look too weird splitting it in half. And now I need to choose a couple photos to fit into these small two by three spaces. So I have the option of maybe trying to see if one of these photos of the house could go there. And I'm getting out my two by three layering die. This is from the layering die bundle. So there is a layering die bundle. There's also the layering dies that come in the basic bundle as well. And so I like to get that die out and see what could work. And I just felt like none of the house ones really could work very well. And let's see, there is this one, but what I don't like is you don't get the full context. It kind of looks like they're, you know, if I cropped it that small, that background is so dark, you can't really tell where they are. So, and I could crop this one smaller, and this may be an option for you, you know, I would say take a look at your photos and see what could be cropped smaller, and you may be surprised, but I don't think I'll use those spots for portraits, unless I just don't have anything else. All right, so I have my other detail photos here. So this is a photo of the wool, and there is little spots in here I could take out. I'm a little bit torn because it'd be kind of fun to show the whole basket of wool, but at the same time, the photo's not particularly nice. You know, it's not a great photo, and same thing with the meat one here. I don't feel like I need to have that whole photo on a layout, so I think these two would be good. It shows little fun details of what we saw. I just have to decide on where to <laughs> crop my photo. You could also, this die. And I was going to try to see it with here, but I think you would lose the context. But this die size is so small, you could actually cut one photo with the same, the same die. So you don't even have to have two different photos. It could be the same photo, but cut in two different spots to fill in those spaces. This one, I have the little part of the house and the tree, but it kind of cuts the tree off in a way I don't really want. So I don't think the landscape shots are going to work the best there, at least to, for me. So I think I'm going to use these two detail kind of shots, the wool and the drying meat. <laughs> I also have the option of going with a different dye if, you know, if I wanted to show a larger crop of the wool. But now I need to see what's going to fit in the three by four spaces. And I do want to show more of the house. And I think this photo fits great in that space. And so does this photo. The other photos, to me, they're not, they're not the greatest photos. Like some of them, they're cropped. The houses are chopped off in a way that's weird. This photo could work, but I like the other two more. Sometimes it's just about which photos do you, do you like more? out of your group. And the other two, I think I want to have people in there. So, you know, I can see the close up. It cuts off her neck a little too much for me. So I don't think I really want that one. And it needs to be a horizontal photo like this one. So this one, I can get a good portion of her in that photo. And sometimes you don't want a certain photo because the facial expressions were <laughs> not the best. This one I think will work really well. 
So these are the two photos I'm gonna fit in those three by four spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the photos and show you the final result in a moment. All right, now this layout is complete. And as you can see, I was able to fill these three by four spaces really well with the buildings and people. I think they are cropped to the right size. I also filled in this space with the wool and I really liked how it turned out. So kind of be open to how you can crop your photos. The wool one to me kind of has the, you know, I wanted the brushes and a little bit of the basking wool, so it worked out. And plus I like the landscape and the mosaic spots. I think this turned out really well. All right, so you saw some of my other photos and now that I have the first page and I put certain photos on this one, I still have some photos that are pretty, or that need to be cropped pretty big. So for my next layout, I'm going to look for a pattern that'll accommodate for more of those photos. I also have a few that are going the vertical direction. So I may look for a layout with more vertical spaces. Maybe some of my photos I think fit in square spaces as well. So let's go back to the pattern gallery. So I'm just taking a quick break here and wanted to show you an older layout that I've made in the past with the same photos, not the same photos, exact photos I'm showing you so far, but some other photos taken from the same trip. And <laughs> I've been picking on some of the photos of the buildings, but I want you to look at that top row on this layout. And if you take photos of a building, it's you know, nice to have like a consistent panoramic shot, which we take a lot of times, but sometimes we don't get that, but you can kind of get that same effect. So as you can see, there's the two buildings on the left and right, and on their own, they kind of look awkward in the photos. But in this case, with the main house in the center, and then the two side buildings, it has a panoramic effect, even though it's not perfect. So I just wanted to point out, these photos don't have to be a total waste or thrown out. There is a neat and cool way you could use them, and this is just one idea. So those two photos didn't necessarily work for the layout I'm making today, but totally could work for this kind of layout. So I'm back in the pattern gallery, and... My first layout had that big four by six focal point in the middle and I don't want to do another layout with another main focal point really. None of my other photos really are very focal point. You know, they're nothing I want to draw too much attention to like the group shot photo. And I don't want, just for the design wise, I don't really want another large focal point right in the middle that makes your eye not really have a good place to rest. So that's how I do it. I don't put the, if I use two focal points, I don't put them in the same spot. I usually don't even use the same shape. So I'm going to avoid anything with the big focal point. So I decided I want to use a pinwheel pattern. And part of me wants to use a pinwheel pattern because I have both some horizontal and vertical photos left. And I'm gonna look for pinwheel patterns with a little two by two square in the middle or no square at all. Some of the pinwheels don't have a center section like that. So again, choosing something that doesn't really accommodate for a big focal point and has a mix of horizontal and vertical spots. And most of my, or what I have left over, a lot of those photos need to be cropped larger for, there's a couple of shots with people in them that need to be cropped a little bigger. So I'm going to look for spots so instead of the previous layout was looking for more medium sized spots, this time I'm gonna look for some larger spots in the pinwheel design. All right, so, and like I said, I wanna mix up both horizontal and vertical. So this is mostly all horizontal, so I don't want that one, even though there's no center, no big focal point. And let's see, there's some here that are big, but. I don't really want to repeat the two by three. I don't really want something that small again. Plus I'm also looking, I forgot to mention, uh, I want something since I had the mosaic on the one side, the little mosaic parts, I want something with a little bit of mosaic on the other side as well to add another landscape photo. 
All right, so I'm going to keep looking again. There's two squares. I don't think that kind of mosaic will work for, I think mosaic like this works well with these kind of photos of flowers, but not for a landscape. And again, a lot of horizontal photos. This one, I don't really want to repeat the same exact mosaic shape as I have on the other side. I want it to have a little more variety. Maybe something like this would work. I have the mosaic in the middle. That would be cool. And there is a mix of horizontal and vertical, but there is a lot of small spots here. Maybe I can find something that will accommodate uh, bigger spots. Let's see. And then there's this one. This one's pretty neat. It's a lot of medium spots. Nothing really mosaic. Although I do want to note that anytime you pick a page pattern, you can change it up. So let's say you had mosaic elements on your first layout and you saw this one and you thought it was perfect. What you could do is cut the little one by three strips into one by one inch squares. So keep that in mind. Any pattern can be adjusted to the way you would like. All right, I'm kind of eyeing this one over here. Even though there's more squares than I thought, I'm pretty sure the photos that can be cropped that need to be cropped bigger, I'm pretty sure they could fit into a square space. And that's why I say get out your dies and check and see if they will fit in a square space. Square spaces are great because you don't have to find anything vertical or horizontal, right? And then it has two spots that are vertical, which there's a couple of photos I really want to fit in there in vertical spots. And then I really like this mosaic section in the center. I think that would could look really neat and can go with the first page I made. So I think I'm going to go with this one, 398. All right, so I'm going to put the paper mats on the grid based on this page pattern, and I will be back in a moment. All right, now I have my photo mats placed on the layout. And I have my two square spots here, and I know exactly which photos I'm going to put in those two spots. I'm still deciding on what to put in the vertical spots, though. So I'm going to check just to make sure. I'm going to check and see if these photos really could fit in a square space crop size or the layering size. And they do. So I'm going to use those two. And as you can see, they're pretty close up. But a lot of photos can fit the square spaces. Many of them can. And I'm struggling with the vertical spaces, though, because there's more photos to choose from for those spots. But I really, really want to show this photo. I really like the idea of showing this little game that they used to play back then, I guess. I, from what I remember, I think you threw the corn in the hoop. Uh, but I have these other two portraits and I want to keep it balanced so we'll see I'm still deciding and now I'm deciding which landscape photo I'd like most in the middle that one seems kind of boring this one here you see a lot of water and sky but it looks kind of bland so I think I want to go with this photo because it'll look like the tree is wrapping around that center part so that'll be pretty neat I think that's a good choice for my landscape photo to fit there. And keep in mind if you're putting a mosaic picture in this pattern that the middle is going to be taken out. So make sure you don't have anything in the middle you want to put in that spot. And I, I might try to put other photos of the house, but I just, I don't really feel like they're going to work. And again, they're not photos that I, I mean, I'm looking at this one and it could work. I'm not really attached to any of these photos too much, so it's okay if they don't work out. Again, they're they're not really going to work for, at least for me, I don't feel like they're going to work for this page. But I still need to find a couple photos for these 3x3 three three square spots. And again, the die you see there, that is from the layering die bundle. I really don't want to crop this one. I think it needs the full contact, so I need to keep it bigger. All right, I'm going to keep looking through my photos here. So there's, I'm going back to this one, but again, it's just not cropped big enough for me. It doesn't still show enough of the context. I could put another group shot in if I really wanted to, 
this one could potentially work. Our arms are cut off a little bit, but that's okay. I don't know if I want to use that one though, but I just realized these two photos that I'm thinking about putting in the vertical spots, I could actually crop them down. I don't feel a need to keep them the full size, so I can just crop those to the square spaces and come back to this one, and that way you can see more of the building with that photo. So these are my chosen photos. Still deciding on this one, but I really, really want to show this hoop game thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these photos, and I will be back in a moment. All right, so most of my layout is finished. I need something for that middle section, but look at this mosaic. Isn't that really cool? So I thought that mosaic turned out really well with the tree. It looks like it's wrapping around the center. These were my two largest crops and cropped photos, and I hand cut those. Actually, I did not use the dies because they weren't the size I like for the 4x4 square size. And everything else fits really well. I'm glad I saved the one photo for the vertical section because you can see more of the building. But I totally forgot about the middle. And I would like to use this photo because you can see the house far away, but her arm would be in there. So that's not going to work very well. So I decided to cut through this house. And so, and actually there's a spot over here I could potentially use. So I'll cut that one too because I'd like to see my options. But if there's a photo you feel like, oh, you don't really like that photo, you could consider just cropping a section of that photo of a detail you like. So this is just the top of the house here. I'm going to cut the other one and be right back. All right, so I cut the other part of the photo. And I actually really like that too. It's just a fun little detail of the house. And... This photo is not drawing my eye as much, I think, because it's not very contrasting on that blue. This photo, to me, stands out a bit more on the blue because there's more of that darker color in there. So I'm going to choose this one. So now we'll complete my page. Although, in the one by three spaces, after this video is over, I think I'm going to put in some alphabet dyes to put in the words Mount Vernon because... I feel like they look a bit plain without something in there. All right, so here is the two page spread and I think it looks really nice. Again, the one by three spaces, I'm gonna be adding some alphabet dyes in there because I feel like they look a bit too boring. I feel like they need a little something there. But other than that, I think this layout looks really good. Again, when you're choosing two page patterns, try to find something with similar elements. So on both sides, you have a little bit of those mosaics in there. Anyway, I hope all of you got a lot of tips in this video, especially if you're someone who likes to print your photos well before you start making the pages, or maybe you even have older photos you still haven't scrapbooked that are already printed. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.